Tuesday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic. Now, one of the most popular variants uh, that we cover on the channel is Sandwich Sudoku. And we've got a Sandwich Sudoku puzzle for you today. Now, this is uh, something that caught my eye actually just this morning on Logic Masters Germany. Um, let me show you. Uh, here it is. You can see that it's a Sandwich Sudoku with a bit of a twist, and it's by the constructor Scott Strosal. And we've covered a few of Scott's puzzles in the past. They've always been very good. Uh, so I have every reason to hope that this one will live up to expectations, especially if we look up here, you can see its difficulty rating is 2 out of 5, so it shouldn't be monstrous, but its rating is over 90%, 92%, solved 25 times. Now this tends to mean it'll be an awesome puzzle. Um, now you can see here, <laughs> it's we've got to help the ants find a path through the Sudoku garden to the sandwich on the other side of the wall. Okay, so if we look down here, we've got some graphics even. We've got some ants starting in the green cell. And they've got to end up in the red cell by the looks of things. And ants are particular about their path. They always move the number of spaces indicated in the current cell. Actually, let's look at, let's look at this example to understand that. I see, so there's a three in the green cell, so they have to move three cells. And then they have to turn 90 degrees and go two cells and then 90 degrees one cell. I see. And in the end, they've got to end up in the red cell. OK, well, that sounds that sounds doable, doesn't it? So let's find the actual puzzle. Where is it? Uh, it's here. Uh, we'll have a go in just a sec, but uh, we are going to do two videos for you today. Uh, Mark has recorded a solve of yesterday's New York Times puzzle where we had a number of requests uh, which presumably means it was uh, a bit more difficult than usual. So check that out. It'll probably go live on the channel um, an hour or two after this video goes live. So uh, if you if you aren't subscribed to the channel and you want to be uh, told when puzzles come out, then you just click the uh, the button down in that corner of the screen, and then the, you can subscribe. And also, if you click the bell icon, you'll be notified um, uh, when. A new video comes out. Uh, make sure you vote by the way as well in the poll we've got running at the moment. We've had a, I think nearly a thousand votes on which of Sam Kaplan Line's recent test, which puzzle from that test you'd like us to solve next in a video. Um, so if you want to have a view on that, do, um, do have a vote. Um, and with that, let's have a look. Now, Sandwich Sudoku, uh, as you'll know if you've ever played it on our app, it's incredibly important to note the squares that cannot contain the numbers one and nine. Because obviously in a sandwich Sudoku, sorry for those of you who don't know what a sandwich Sudoku is, uh, the rules are on the right hand side of the screen, but these clues outside the grid give the sum of the cells sandwiched between the one and the nine in the relevant row and column. So the best place to start this puzzle is gonna be this row. 35. That means the cells between the 1 and the 9 have to add up to 35. But if we ask ourselves what a complete row of a Sudoku adds up to, we just have to add up the numbers from 1 to 9, and that's going to give you 45. So if there's 35 sandwiched between the 1 and the 9, the 1 and the 9 are going to have to be at the extreme ends of the row. And then what we'll do, oh actually I'm going to, I'm going to highlight this in yellow I think. So normally I use green but obviously green looks like it's going to be the path of the ants so I need to keep that somehow separate. Um, okay so we've got once we've got ones and nines in the grid we can start to fill in lots of things. Yeah look at the zero in column one. So that means that the one and nine in this column have to be adjacent to each other which means the one or nine is either going to be here or here so we can immediately rule out ones and nines from all of those squares. And in fact, if we look at this zero here, if this was a one or a nine, we would have to put a second one or a nine next to it because there's, there's a zero total here and that would put three ones and nines in this box. Now there can only obviously ever be two. There's gonna be one one and one nine in any three by three box, not three. So this isn't the one or the nine. The one or the nine is here. And the 30 clue means that we can put in loads of, uh, we can go that far in fact. It's possible 
that we could have a 1 or a 9 here and these two cells would add up to 5 using a 2 and a 3 so we can we got some distance or some logic out of that this square can't be a 1 or a 9 because if it is that one will be as well so let's put in another yellow square 31 total in column 5 well 31 is an interesting total because that means that there can only be one digit outside of the 1 to 9 sum and that digit will be a 4 um, now if that's the case we can actually highlight all of those squares in yellow because we can't put a 1 or a 9 here because even if we put the other 1 or 9 as far away as we can then we'd have these two cells here having to add up to 4 and the only way of making 4 in two cells in a Sudoku is with a 1 and a 3 and that would repeat the 1 in the column that's not going to work so we can do exactly the same thing look in column 7 Uh, what next? Let's use the ninth column now because we have this 1 or 9 here. So obviously neither of these squares can be uh, a 1 or a 9. Now the minimum number of cells you need to add up to 23 inside the sandwich is 4 because 8 plus 7 plus 6 is equal to 21. So that's not high enough. So we need a fourth digit. So 1, 2, 3, 4. None of these cells can be a 1 or a 9. Well, the 2 is not a 1 or a 9, axiomatically, so the red cell actually is a 1 or a 9. Ah, and now the 5 clue is important, because we can't have a 2 cell 5 clue. If we try and put the 1 or 9 here, these two squares have to add up to 5 without using a 2. Well, that's impossible. 1 and 4 would obviously repeat the 1s in the row. So this square, this must be the 1 or the 9. And this is just a five on its own and we get to place colors in all of those and colors in all of these the 31 clue now in column seven is fixed we know there's exactly one cell outside the sandwich so that's got to be a four that fills in a one or a nine at the bottom we've now got both ones and nines in box nine so these two are not one or nine and that field, look, that's going to be helpful in terms of what's going on in column 8. You can see we've got to fit a 1 and a 9 into two of these three cells. And we've got to put a 2 in between them. So it, actually it's going to be forced to be this. The 30 clue is now resolved. That's going to force one cell outside the sum. So we're going to have 30 in, in these six cells here. Plus 1, plus 9, that's 40. And that's why this cell has to be a 5. That one's obviously a yellow cell as well. 22 in this row. We know 22 must be at least 4 cells. So we can put yellow squares there. And look, we've got the same thing now in row 5. We know there's got to be a 1 or 2. Well, there's got to be 2 cells that contain the 1 and the 9. They've got to be those 2 cells now. There's a 5 between them. That must be there. These two cells are yellow. This cell can't be a 1 or a 9 because we can't put 13 into this, uh, this cell here on its own. Ah, and now this row, the 7 row is interesting, look. Because we obviously can't put the 1 and the 9 into these two squares because there would be nothing between them. So this has got to be a 1 or a 9. And we can go further than that now. We can't now have this cell as a 1 or a 9 because we can't make 3 cells add up to 7 if we can't use a 1. So this is going to have to be a 1 or a 9 as well. So far we're doing alright, aren't we? Ah, now this is interesting as well, this 7 column here. Well, this can't be a 1 or a 9 and certainly we can't have a 4 cell sum that adds to 7 so this is going to have to be a 1 or a 9 and the 7 will be into that square and if we look um, at the top row this is all unfolding quite logically at the moment we need we either have a 7 on its own and the 1 or the 9 is here or we put the 1 9 here and these two cells have to add up to 7 but we can't use 1 because the one's already gone in the sandwich. We can't use two 
So 2, 5 is not available. And we can't use 3 because 3, 4 isn't available. So actually a 2 cell sum here is not going to work. This square is a 1 or a 9. This is a 7. And we can fill in those two squares in yellow, therefore. And the 31 clue here is now forced as well. So we're, doing, we're doing nicely. Uh, let's make that square yellow. 14 requires at least three cells if one of them is a 4. Uh, this can't be a 1 or a 9, because if this is a 1 or a 9, either, either of these squares must be because of the 0 total. That can't be a 1 or a 9, because we've already got two 1s and 9s. So this is a 1, 9. 14, look, in 1, 2, 3, 4 cells. That is okay, but only if you use 2, 3, 4, and 5. So these squares must be 2, 3, and 5. This square's got to be a 3 because we've got the 1 and the 9 already placed. That's not a 3, therefore. That can be a yellow square because we've already got the 1 and the 9. So this must be the last 1 or 9. If we now... Oh, no, we've got 1 to place here as well. Let's do that one. And check the grid. I think that's it. So this, this is the base pattern that we're always aiming for in a sandwich sudoku i.e to place the ones and the nines and then what do we do next in this puzzle we could start to trace the snake look or the ants i should say because this two can't come vertically if it comes vertically then it goes straight through the end cell uh, that's not going to work we need to end up on the end cell so this is going to have to come this way and then it must turn 90 degrees and go four cells. So one, two, three, four. So it ends up here. Now remember this isn't like a, a, a snake. Some of the puzzles we do are snakes that can't touch each other uh, diagonally uh, or orthogonally. But I think this one can. So I think in theory it could come this way and then sort of come back in like this. So I'm not sure. Oh, well, I suppose what we could do. This can't be a one, so it can't come this way. And it can't be a two, so it, do, it definitely turns this way. And it can be a three. Can't be a four, it can't be a five. It can be a six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Ah, and it can't be bigger than 6 or it'll go off the edge of the grid. So that square can only be a 3 or a 6. If it's a 3, we end up on this square and that would have to be a 1, therefore, or the 9 would take us off the edge of the grid. Uh, okay. Right, where should we look next? Let's look at the bottom row. We've got 2, 3, 4, and 5, so these three squares have got to be 6, 7, and 8. So column 1 now, we've got a 23 total. So we know that these four cells add to 23, plus 1, plus 9, that's 33, plus 2 is 35. So these two squares have got to sum up to 10 to make 45, so this one can't be 8. This has got to be a 3 or a 4. Right, let's just scan and check that we've got all of the easy digits in. These outies have to sum up to 13. Five in one of those two squares. So if this was five, this would be eight, which looks like it's plausible. Ah, seven here. So this square can only be a two or a three this square must be a 4 or a 5 because of the contents of the column 5 there, 7 there we've done 18 here, so that's 28, these have to add up to 17 7, 
13 here. Ah, this 13 is useful because this is a two cell sum. It can't use four, nine. It can't use six, seven. So this is a five, eight pair and there's a five there. That's nice. So that gives us a couple more digits. Now these fives and this five interact and force a five into this square which means there's a five in one of those two positions on the left hand side. Right, so if you, ah, there's no five here anymore. There must be an eight in one of those two squares. Three, 31, two, 23 we've already looked at. So, okay, where now? Sevens, fives, four, fours maybe? No, I'm not sure. Twos? Ah, yeah, we can pencil mark twos into those two positions. And... Okay, so now we have to think. Three. I feel like I'm missing something that sort of glare. Ah, hang on. No, we've done that. We've done that. Ah, oh, this five. There you go. That's a four. So that's a three. Which means that's a three. Four must be locked into one of those two squares. So if we look at this column now, we've actually got seven digits all but. We just need to place two and six, and there's a six there. So this must be six, this must be two. These two squares have got to be two and eight in some order. which means these two squares have got to be three and four in some order. Uh, okay. These two squares are gonna to have to be four and seven and there's a four there. So that's four, that's seven. One of these two squares must be a seven. And if we look at this column, this square here has got to be a two or an eight. Now this 22 clue is resolvable because look, we've got a seven here. So we know that the outies, i.e. the cells outside the sandwich sum, have got to sum up to 13. And that's because one plus nine is 10, plus the contents of the sandwich, that's 22, so 32, so we know these have to add up to 13 to give us 45. And we know these must be five and eight, and there's a five there, so that's an eight. This is a five. That means this five resolves that that's a five. So five in one of these two squares. Now does this eight help? Not massively. Seven. So this row now, we still need to place four and six into it. There's a four here. So this is a six. This is a four. Ah, now that's useful because that makes this square a three. And that is on the ant path. So the ants do come to this square. And if they come to this square, this square cannot be a nine because that's going to take them off the end of the grid. So this has to be a one. Nice, so nine, one, one, nine. This nine therefore gives us a nine and a one here. We should extend the path like this. Ah, and it can't come down because if it hits the eight, it goes off the edge of the grid. So it goes up to the two. I'm not sure we can tell which way it goes from there. 
But that was that was better, wasn't it? We got a bit of progress done there. So this now, this is a four just by normal Sudoku. This is a seven. The four here resolves that this is a three. Now, once this is a three, we know this is a seven from the earlier logic because we needed these two to add up to ten. So this square is a six. One of these two squares is a six in the top. And maybe what we can do now is to think about how we get to this square, because thinking about it, we can't, this square can't turn into this square because this is too big, this is a five. So the only way of landing on the sort of last square of snakes and ladders here, this one, is if we come from below and not many of these cells are going to hit this one, two, three. no, that one doesn't. So it's actually, in fact, only one cell hits it. I should have looked at this before. It's this seven. So yes, I could have resolved this sum down here by using this, I think. So these have to come up here to hit this and be the end of the snake. So something now has to hit this. And it can't be that, can't be that, can't be that. It could be the four, it can't be this. So it's either the four or the eight. One, two, three, yeah. So it's one of these two squares has to hit this square. It's probably going to be this one. Um, Okay, but did that actually give us any more digits? I'm not sure that it did. Nice, okay, this is a nice puzzle. I'm enjoying this. Right, so we've got six, seven, and eight into those squares, just by normal Sudoku. These two squares have got to be two and three. Let's look at the 18 total now, because this is gonna give us something up here, isn't it? because these squares have got to add up to 28. These have to add up to 17, therefore. We've got a five here, so these add up to 12. This has got to be four and eight. We can't use three and nine. Otherwise, we'll repeat the nine in the, in the column. That's not eight anymore. Ah, that's, that's eight down there, which means that's six over on this side. That's got to be seven, that's six, that's eight. This square here's got to be a four to complete the column. That places a four here as well. Uh, two, three. Okay. So along here, we, the, oh, we need a seven in this row. So that's seven, eight like that. This has got to be an eight by normal Sudoku now. It's an eight in one of those two squares. This square must be a three. I wonder whether I'm just wondering at the point at which I'm going to have to use the, the uh, ant trail again. Two, eight, two, eight. Have we used all of the totals? Use this one, use this one, use this one. Obviously, we've used that one. Yeah, we have, I think. Yeah, so I think we are going to have to turn our attention to the to the ants in a moment. That's what what's these two squares? Two and five. Ah, there's a five there. So that's five, that's two. That fixes that this is a five. That means this is a two. Ah, that helps with the two and the eight. That gives us an eight here now. These two squares have got to be six and seven. One, nine. So this must be three, six, and seven. So let's fully pencil mark this then and see if we can resolve this. Three, six, seven, that's not six. These two squares have got to be two, six, seven. So this is a two or a seven. And this is a two or a six. Right, so let's look at this now. So if this comes left, it's going to go to here. Then it can't drop down 
because if it hits a six, it's going to either run into itself or go off the edge of the grid. So this turns up to one, two, three, four, uh, no, it doesn't come this way at all because this 5 can't hit a square that hasn't been used yet. This 5 would reflect back onto the start of the trail. So this 2 actually comes back this way and hits this square, a 3, which moves up to the 5. I hope this doesn't break now. 1, 2, 3, 4, five. Yeah, so the 5 then comes across to the 6. Six goes one, two, three, four, five, six. So, oh, this is very clever. Look at this. So now we can't make this a nine or it's going to drop off the end of the grid here. So this resolves that this has to be a one. Now that one nine resolution is going to resolve all of the other ones and nines as well, presumably. That's very lovely. Yes, it does. So we end up here, and then we have to go to this square. Oh. So that's going to take us up here. Oh, I might I might have boo-booed this, I think. Let's have a look. So it goes here. It goes, it's got to go up. If it comes down, it goes off the edge of the grid. So one, two, three. It goes up to the one. It must turn this way to the four. Can't go up. One, two, three four to the two then it would come this oh yes it would come this way the four would not work the one does work then it drops down and then it comes oh it is that is mesmerizing so this path is completely bonkers it goes all around the houses <laughs> um now let me just check this so this also the path also resolves the ambiguity we're seeing in the grid here because when this turned this way i need it to be a three and not a seven so that putting a three into this square that's beautiful setting isn't it finishes this block which finishes those squares and this resolves the seven and the six the one the nine can be done over here and i think this is going to be the finished solution so let's check Yes, this is the finished solution. Now what we should do, in fact, let me see if I can do this. Can I snip this? I'm going to try and snip the grid and let's put it in, in paint and paint what this solution is meant to look like. I don't know if this is going to work, but we'll have a go. Um, so we need to launch paint. Here it is. Let's put it there. Paste the image in. Yeah, okay, now I have to draw, draw, how do you draw in this? Paint, paintbrush. So let's see if this works. We start in this square and we go two. Oh, this is nice, yeah, four. One, two, three, four, three, one, two, three. Then we went up and then we went right. One, two, one, two, three. Then we went one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, six, and then it comes here and then it goes upwards, which is what surprised me. Oh, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, two to here, one to here, four across to this side, and seven, and the ants get their sandwich and go off the edge of the grid. Brilliant, Scott, loved it. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. I come back tomorrow for another one or two editions of Cracking the Cryptic.